Hallelujah. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Always. Praise God. Can I ask you, my dear brothers, my sisters, my friend, would you bow your heads and close your eyes and let's just pray that the Lord would make this time together meaningful? Precious Heavenly Father, we love you, we adore you, we praise you. We thank you for your Son, Jesus, the lover of our soul. Jesus, we exalt you and magnify you. We ask you to come at this moment and fill us with the Holy Spirit, with wisdom and understanding and revelation. Fill us with truth. Stir our spirits and allow us to be like you, Lord, for we were made in your image. Today I ask for an outpouring of revelation into the spirits of every person watching at this moment. And Lord, as always, we vow to give you the praise and the glory forever and ever. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, welcome. I'm Pastor Ian from the Living Word Church in San Pedro. Are you ready to take an amazing journey in God's Word with me? Hallelujah. We are about to enjoy the Word of God in the depths of our spirits. Today I want to talk to you about running with vision. You remember last week I spoke to you about running to win? You know, in all reality, it's next to impossible to run and win without vision. We must have vision. I'm sure that you have heard this saying that says, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. That's an astounding statement, you know that? Very, very true. And what's the difference between these two people? The person that considers something as garbage and the person that sees the same thing as a treasure? What's the difference between these two people? Vision. Nothing less. Vision. You know the Bible does suggest vision, especially the importance of it. In Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10, it says, Does anyone dare despise this day of small beginnings? They'll change their tune when they see Zerubbabel sitting or setting the last stone in place. Go back to the vision. Zerubbabel was the governor of Judah. Zerubbabel had nothing to lay the foundation of the temple but a vision from God, a word from God. And you know that what? That was more than enough. The only thing he had to start to build this foundation for the temple with was rubble and trouble. But you know what? He had his eye on the goal. He had vision. He held on to it. And that's why the scripture just said, go back to vision. Go back to vision. Don't despise small beginnings. You see, people might look at you and judge you and judge what they see you to be now, but they might not be seeing your vision. They don't see the goal that you see. And though people may mock and ridicule and talk against in your spirit, you hold on to that goal. You hold on to that vision and you run with it. What you are today does not suggest who you are going to be tomorrow. Where you are today does not suggest where you're going to be tomorrow. What is vision anyway? Vision is a mental image produced 
by the imagination beginning with the end in mind or in focus. Listen, we all have imagination. We just tend to use it in fantasies instead of for vision. But vision really is a mental image that is burnt into our minds, into our imagination. And when that mental image is burnt into the imagination, it creates a vivid picture that helps us to run with the vision the longest day that we live. And you know what? This mental image that is created by our imagination, it has the end in focus right down back to the beginning. You tend to see more the future than the present. You tend to see the end more than the beginning. In Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 and 10, it says, I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. Did you know that your God is a visionary? Really, he is more than a visionary. He is the creator. But he is the visionary creator. Because God declares in Isaiah 46 that he sees the end from the beginning. In other words, he already knew what it would take to reach the end and prepared everything necessary to reach the end. And that's what a visionary does. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2 says, In the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. You and I today are enjoying eternal life, but it didn't begin, eternal life did not begin, or the plans for eternal life did not begin when we received it. Eternal life began way back before God created the world and before he created people. He already knew what he wanted to give us, what we would need. He already foresaw that we would rebel against him. We would sin against him. We would be disconnected from him. He already saw that we would need a savior before he created us. And you know what our heavenly father did? He went ahead and he prepared that beforehand because he knew what the outcome of creating humanity would be like. And so the Bible says God planned eternal life before the beginning of time. Can I prove that? Of course I can. In 1 Peter 1.20 it says, God chose Jesus as your Savior long before the world began. Did you hear that? Did you see that? Jesus did not come into the world 2,000 years ago by accident, by a final plan. The Bible says that long before the world began, God already chose Jesus to be the Savior of the world. That's a visionary. That's running with vision. He had the end in mind. He planned it through and then he began at the beginning. That's God. Our God is a creator, but he is a visionary. He sees the end from the very beginning. He prepares for it, and he provides what was necessary for it. You know, my brothers and my sisters, my friends, Everyone ends up somewhere in life. Only a few people will end up where they intended. And that will be those who have vision. Vision is very, very important. Helen Keller was once asked, what would be worse than being born blind? She replied, having sight without 
a vision. Who was Helen Keller? Helen Keller was a teacher, a lecturer. She was a disability advocate. She was an author. Helen Keller, at a very, very young age, acquired a disease in her body, something to do with her stomach and her brain, and it left her blind and deaf for the rest of her life. Could you imagine not being able to see, not being able to hear? Yet Helen Keller became very profitable. Helen Keller reached a place in life of productivity that most of us probably will never reach even though we have ears to hear and we have eyes to see. No wonder she said, what's worse than being born blind? A person without vision. Because without vision and without, sorry, without sight and without hearing, she became very productive in life. And yet many of us have our five senses well intact. And so many people are not productive in life. Why? Because they do not have a vision for their life. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Two things in this verse. It says, no vision, no restraint. You see, vision is what holds us back from living recklessly, wastefully. Vision is what puts a restraint upon us that we don't do just what we want to do, but do what we should do. And then the second half of that verse says, but happy is he that keeps the law. Happy is he that keeps the law. You see, it is scripture, the Holy Bible, the words of God in scripture that creates for us a vision that we can run with for life. And the Bible says when we keep that law, when we keep God's words, it puts a restraint on us. We can't live the way we want. We can't do what we want. We do what God says. We live how God says we should live. And, and sometimes people might think, well, that's a difficult thing. But really, it is setting us up for a glorious future without vision. I mean, you don't have to look far. Look at your neighborhood. Look at the world today. People that don't have vision are living without restraint, recklessly, purposelessly, wastefully. We must acquire vision to run with in life. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are only a few who find it. You see, let me tell you something before I continue. People in this world might have incredible vision for success, but how sad it is to have a vision for earthly things that will fade away and will perish in a very short moment and never had a vision for eternity. And this is what Matthew chapter 7 is saying. This is what Jesus said with his own lips. He said, the life that ends up in destruction is very wide and broad. In other words, you can live loosely without restraint, without purpose, wastefully, destructively, and down the road one day, your life will be in a mess. He says, however, so many people, choose to take that road because it's the easiest thing for the present time. He says, but then there is another road that is very narrow and it is very difficult. He says, there's only a few that go and buy it. 
One road will ultimately lead to hell and one road will ultimately lead to heaven. The road that is very narrow and very difficult is the vision of God for our life for eternity. It is a life that says, I have to live by the rules of God. I have to live with a restraint. I can't do what I want. I can't say what I want. I must live the way God calls me to live. The broad road is from the enemy. And it is very flattering. And it is very appealing. But the end is destruction. And so, before I continue with running with vision, let me just tell you that to, in order to have a vision that will last eternity, you must envision God in your life. If not, every form of vision with earthly success will one day slap us right in our face and become absolutely nothing. You know, it is vision that makes disappointments and sufferings bearable. Yes, it is. In Genesis 29 and verse 20, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed like only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Listen to that incredible story. Jacob, one of the patriarchs of all, one of our forefathers in scripture, the Bible says one day went and saw Rachel and wanted to marry her. And the condition that was set by Rachel's father was that he had to work seven years for her. If not, he wouldn't be able to get her as wife. He wouldn't be able to marry her. The beautiful thing about this story is that it says that Jacob saw seven years like nothing. Why? Because Jacob had a vision. He envisioned Rachel being his wife, his beautiful wife with her, creating and developing a family that will serve God, love God. And because the, the vision he had for his life with Rachel was so so intense, working seven years for Rachel was absolutely nothing for him. You see, when you have vision, it makes uh, troubles and obstacles and sufferings seem like nothing because you have your eyes on the goal. You know where you're going in life. I want to encourage you. Adapt a vision for your life. Create a vision for your life. And I'll show you how to do that in the next two sermons after this one. But for now, understand the importance of vision for your life. To run, to win, you must have a vision to get you there. If not, you won't reach at all. Praise God. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Looking on to Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Now look at that for a little bit. Let's look at our Savior for a short moment. What made Jesus embrace the horrors of Calvary, the horrors of crucifixion and the cross? Vision. He had a vision. You know who the vision was? You and I. He saw millions and millions and hundreds of millions of children coming to God. To die the death that Jesus died was for the worst of worst in the world. It was for criminals, for murderers, for thieves. That's who it was for. And yet Jesus died the death of a criminal, the death of a loser, the death of a murderer, the death of the despised. Yet when you read through scripture, the Bible says he looked forward to it. How did he do that? Because of vision. He had a vision for his life. God gave him that vision. He adopted, he kept his eyes on the goal and he ran with that vision. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13 and 16 says, 
All these faithful ones died without receiving what God had promised them. But they saw it all from a distance and welcome the promise of God. You know, all the Old Testament saints, many of them died also horrific deaths because of their faith in God, because of living the God kind of life. And you know what? Today, they're with God forever and ever. But how, how were they able to get to that place where the suffering and the persecution meant nothing to them. The Bible says some were sawed in half, burnt with hot oil. Some were thrown into the lion's den, into fire, were killed with the sword, and yet for them, that meant nothing. How did they do that? They had their eyes fixed on their eternal home. They had a vision that they ran with all the days of their life, and that vision was given to them by God. They adapted to their life, and they ran with it, lived it, and today they're living in glory. You know, Aiming beyond the normal, the natural, the common, the regular, the set limits of life suggests vision. Yes. I don't know if you remember that character that was well known by the name of Bruce Lee. You know, Bruce Lee seemed to have been invincible when it came to sparring, fighting, hand to hand. And it seems like he never, ever missed a punch. Well, I read once that the reason he never missed was because Bruce Lee always figured in six inches further than his opponent. Meaning that even if he would not have thrown his hand as far as he should, he would still catch because he was aiming beyond the target. In life, vision. We know when someone has a vision because they're, they're out of the box. They're not living like everyone else. Their aims are not like everyone else. Their limits are not like everyone else. It's like they're always reaching beyond. That suggests that a person has vision. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Some people might say, well, that's just pride. Or, or he or she just thinks him or herself better than others. No. Do you know that the Bible tells us that we should reach further than we naturally can? Than we regularly can? than our earthly limits suggest. The Bible tells us we should reach further. Listen to this. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2 and 3, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent and stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left. Notice God wants to expand us. God wants us to fulfill our dreams. God wants us to adapt the vision, to run with it, and to fulfill it. But we are the ones that have have to start to see beyond the set limits, beyond the regular, beyond the natural. And when we do that, we allow God to come in and move in His ability and His power. Where have you been limiting yourself? Where have you been limiting God who has the ability infinitely to work in your life. Think about it. The Bible says expand, stretch out your stakes. Start to see bigger than yourself, more than what you can achieve and more than what you can do. And then create a vision. Cause that image to be burnt into your mind and run with it. And God steps in and he fulfills what we could never have fulfilled on our own. Vision creates a positive, hopeful, expectant 
confident, enthusiastic approach to life. Vision does all of that. In Numbers chapter 14 and verse 24, but my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly. I will bring him into the land he went to. You know, there were 12 spies that were sent out to spy the promised land for them to come back and bring a general accurate report of what they saw because God had promised them the land. Do you know that out of the 12 leaders of the tribes that went, only two had vision? The other 10 lacked vision. And the lack of vision caused them to become discouraged, desperate. It caused them to have a spirit of defeat. They became overwhelmed. They didn't even want to move forward in their life. But Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, when God told them before they went to spy out the land, God said, I'm giving you that land. They went and they, those two, Caleb and Joshua, saw the exact same thing the other ten saw. But they had vision. They remembered what God said and they burnt that image into their mind and it created an imagination which brought vision. And when they came back, even though the ten was discouraged and despondent and felt like they were defeated just by what they saw, Caleb said, we're going to take that land. It doesn't matter what we saw. It doesn't matter how it looked. It doesn't matter how small we look in their sight and how huge they look in our sight. God said he would give it to us. And I believe him and we're going to go take it. Well, long story short, they ended up with the land. But 10 people did not have vision. And it, may, it, it robbed them of uh, optimism. It robbed them of being enthusiastic and confident. And the other two were very confident. They were very enthusiastic. They saw life through the eyes of encouragement because they were running with vision. My friend, my brother, and my sister, it is vision that makes obstacle and suffering seem like nothing. Without a vision, every problem seems too big. Every trial seems too hard. Without a vision, every suffering seems too painful. Yet with a vision, nothing seems unconquerable. It's time to run with a vision. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, Paul the Apostle says, I'm still not all that I should be, but I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Paul had many things in his past that could haunt him, pull him down, and bring him defeat. But he said, I am not even thinking about the past. I'm looking forward. I have a vision. I have a goal. I'm running with that, and I am going to reach the end. Paul said that. You and I today, we cannot take time to look in the past and to cry over spilt milk and dead dry bones. We have to move on, look forward, allow a vision created by God to be adopted into our lives and start to run with it. Allow that vision, that goal to burn deeply in our mind and create an imagination, an image that becomes more real than where we are today in our present lives. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. Who can do that but God? You see, that's why it's so very important for us to go to God to create a vision. And I'll talk to you more about that next week. Because vision 
is what will create life in deadness. Rivers in barrenness. That's what vision does. And God is so desperate to give us a vision to run with. And again, let me remind you, having an earthly vision without an eternal vision is nothing but disaster and disappointment. We must have eternity in mind and then build right down to the beginning in our present time. Finally, vision demands a written reminder of our intended destination. You see, we are people that tend to forget. We are people that tend to lose focus. We are people that tend to become distracted by situations and by circumstances, by adversity, by all kinds of things. And so we must remember that if a vision is going to last a lifetime and even into eternity, we have to etch that thing down. We got to write it down so we do not lose focus and direction. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 it says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. You see, the appointed time is all the way down yonder. However, to get down yonder, we must not lose focus. We must have the end in focus. And so the Bible tells us that we must write that vision down. And listen, there comes a time when we have written down that goal where we want to end up in life. When we have written that down and you stick that thing on your wall and you never take it down. And when you focus on that thing day after day after day after day, soon you won't even need the written vision and focus again because it's going to be etched in your mind your mind will actually create a mental image through your imagination and when that happens is when you are going to run with vision and you're going to fulfill that goal in life dear friend take life seriously because it's more valuable than anything the world can ever afford do you have a vision for your spiritual life for eternity? Jesus is the answer. If you do not have one, let me tell you religion is not the answer. Let me tell you that Jesus is the answer. The word of God is the answer. But you need a vision for your spiritual life and for eternity. Do you have a vision for your family life? Look at the world at large today. How many families have been torn apart? How many families are destroyed? How many people have suffered not one, two, three, dozens of divorces in their lives? Why? Because they don't have a vision for their family life. And guess what? The devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll take your marriage out. He'll take your family out. Your children will suffer. Get a vision for your family life. You can find that in scripture and then etch it in the tablet of your mind and live it and your family life will be successful. Do you have a vision for your financial life? Do you know how many people are overburdened in their finances today? Do you know how many people are broke, busted and disgusted today? You know why that happened? Because they didn't have a vision for their financial life. Life is something serious. It's not a ball game. It should be lived by principles. God wants you to have a vision for your finances. And scripture will give you the best plan for your finances. A fail-proof plan. Do you have a vision for your health? If not... You see, when you're young, your body will tolerate almost anything. But when you have reached the top of that hill and you start to go down, your body becomes weak and your body needs a health plan. Not one that will kill you because of being so rigid, but a health plan that will make your body run on optimum. 
God wants to give you a health plan for your life. Guess what? It's found in scripture. As I close today, I want to remind you. Vision is a mental image produced by the imagination. We all have an imagination. Let's not just use it for fantasies. And it begins with the end in mind or the end in focus. Again, let me remind you as I close, everyone ends up somewhere in life. But only those with vision will end up where they intended to end up. The others will regret without being able to change anything in their life. If you do not have a vision for life, any road will take you there and you'll never even know when you get there. What a mockery. What a disaster. What a failure and what a defeat. A vision is not optional. Running with vision is compulsory. We need a vision. I want you to tune in again next week. As I share with you how to adopt that vision, how to create that vision in your life. Let's take a short moment and let's pray that God will help you to create a vision in every area of your life that will put restraint on your life and that will be a blessing for you in your older years. Can I ask you once again to close your eyes and bow your head? Heavenly Father, humanity tends to blow with the wind. We blow with every new trend. We incline ourselves towards every new thing that pops up on the horizon. And that has brought defeat and destruction to many. So many in the world today have taken the broad and wide road that is leading them to destruction in their ignorance. And so few have taken the very narrow and difficult road that leads to life. But today, Lord, your people, as they heard and as they listened, Lord, they desire to run with vision. And so I pray that you would forgive, Lord, their hearts, their lives. Forgive them for running without vision, for living their life without restraint, for living their lives loosely. And Lord, now in your mercy and in your grace, release upon them, draw within their minds a mental image that will create an imagination bringing vision for all eternity in their lives. I pray, Lord, that you would give them the grace that they would make the effort and use self-discipline and even the strength that you have given them to live a life filled, Lord God, with vision. I bless them now that they may run with vision every single day of their life. I pray this in the magnificent name of Jesus. Dear friend, God bless you. Be sure to tune in again next week as I continue with running with vision. God bless you.